We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we continue our study in the Torah. Tonight we will be in Genesis 30. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior Christ the Lord. Okay, so we're going to have to look at some things here in the, the Torah in Genesis 30. This is the making, as we, we said, the 12 tribes of Israel. This is where Leah and Rachel are going to get in competition with one another. Remember, back in this society, it was so important for the woman to be able to bring offspring to the male to keep the genealogy going. And the 12 tribes of Israel were so and are so important to, to God. And uh, this is a learning lesson for us, too, that there is no child ever born into this earth that's a mistake because God does not make mistakes. Everything is done for his purpose and his glory. God has, has the season. Everything works out perfectly. But there's also a way to do it the way God wants us to do it. And we learn from this that, A, there's no mistakes when it comes to God when a human being is born, but do it the way the Lord tells you to do it, and it will go a lot smoother with you. Again, all God's word is, uh, is edification, as, as Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture, Genesis 30 included, all scripture is God breathed for our edification, our doctrine, so we know what to do, what to do to get on the right track and stay on the right track. Because Rachel and Leah are going to have a battle, and a battle about who can create the most children. I've seen a lot of battles in my life, but this is not the one you want to get in a battle with. You trust in the Lord in all things, and He is the God of making it right the first time. And we'll show you how precise the wording again in the Hebrew is to the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Later, this is going to be very important, because Jacob here will later become Israel when he wrestles with God, and he will give an incredible prophecy at the end of Genesis that is just absolutely uh, breathtaking. And uh, it all came true. And some of it still yet to be uh, come true, but it's amazing when we see this. Okay, so let's get into it. We'll explain the names of the children. And again, when you have a split household, it's much, much more difficult to raise your children. We, saw, we see later on with King David, he had a split household. He had many wives. And the wives and the sons, or the daughters of that particular wife, have different competing agendas, and it becomes a tough situation. That's why God created one man, one woman, in the image of God to come together. And we know that that always can't happen, but that's what God created. Why he created it? Because when you do it outside of that, it makes it more difficult. But know this, that God does not make mistakes. Everything's for a purpose, and it's always for his purpose and his glory. Verse 1. Now, when Rachel saw she bore Jacob no children, this was very important back in ancient Israel, that if you were barren, you, you felt unloved. You were like, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? I'm supposed to, to, to do this for my husband and to keep the genealogy of my family going. Rachel envied her sister. See, it never starts good with an envy. When you're envying somebody else, that's not of God. That is a form of jealousy, envy, that's covetedness of your sister because she bore children and he did, or she did not. And said to Jacob, give me children or else I die. And you think, well, that's a little far-fetched, but that's the way it was in ancient Israel. If you did not bear children, you felt like your life was incomplete. And Jacob, especially when you have a, a, a sister that is producing children and you are not. And Jacob's anger was aroused. Jacob, Jacob's got temper. Jacob should have kept calm, but you know what? We all get tempers and we all, we all are uh, a work in progress. And he was aroused against Rachel and said, Am I in the place of Theos? Or I'm sorry, am I in the place of Elohim, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Am I in the place of God? Am I God to, give, to, to make this? not my fault. It's not my fault this is going on. And it probably didn't help her, uh, help her situation. So she said, Here is my maid, Billa. So they, back then, in ancient, uh, before Israel was Israel, um, they would... Uh, it was common that if you couldn't have children, that your handmaid, and we saw that that's what happened with Abraham, uh, with Sarai, uh, Hagar, that you would give them the handmaid so that you can continue the genealogy of that particular line if you were barren, because it was so crucial to keep the genealogy of that particular tribe and keep the name. We're talking about my son, uh, Creed. 
And uh, he is uh, the last of a long generation of our family, just many, many men in our family from years and years and years. And now we're down to the end that if my son Creed does not have uh, children, a, a male child, our last name will cease. It will be done. It will be over with. So that was how important it was, and it lasts for generations to generations. As we see the 12 tribes of Israel and how important they are, God had a plan the whole time. Here's my maid, Billa. Billa means troubled. <laughs> it's trouble to go that route. Don't go that route. Trust in the Lord. He will provide. Go into her and she will bear a child on my knees. So she'll bear it on my knees and I'll hold it and I'll say, well, it's mine. That I also may have children by her. So if she can't do it, she was going to have Bella, meaning trouble, to have, have the child. Then she gave him Bella, her maid, as a wife, and Jacob went into her. And Bella conceived and bore Jacob a son. Again, God didn't make any mistakes. It was meant, he didn't want it to go that way. But when you go down that road, it's, he's going to turn it around. Romans 8.28 was still here. Then Rachel said, Elohim has judged my case, and he also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore, she shall call his name Dan. So the tribe of Dan, Dan was born. Dan means a judge. And we're going to see throughout the scripture that Dan and uh, Ephraim get the backhand of the Holy Spirit throughout all of the Bible. And uh, it's very fascinating because they do, do uh, how they brought up uh, idols and false gods into their territories and how he was named a judge, judging in the wrong manner. We see in our study in the book of Revelation that Dan and Ephraim are not mentioned of the 12 tribes. And that is uh, consistent throughout the whole, the whole Bible. Dan had rocky roads, and so did Ephraim. Rachel's maid, Billah, conceived again. Uh, so Rachel said, God, Elohim has judged my case and, and heard my voice and given me a son that he shall be called Dan, judge. And Rachel began, uh, made Billah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel, with, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister. Again, a battle. We're wrestling with my sister. Who can create the most children? And indeed, I have prevailed. I have prevailed because my handmaid had a... That's kind of a perverse way of, of, of having a competition. But uh, that's the way it was back in ancient Israel. So she called his name Naphtali. Naphtali meaning wrestling, r literally wrestling. And again, goes back to the tradition, how important it was to keep the offspring. Larger families were so important back then. Kind of the days of, of if you're in America and uh, you have... Um, great-grandparents that were grown up on farms. Back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, a farming community in the United States of America was so important. So you had large families so that you could help out on the farm. Same thing here. You had to have large families because there was no retirement system for the parents that, according to the Torah, according to the law that would come later, but they had the moral law, that in the elderly ages of the parents, the children would take care of the parents. And if you had great, uh, great animals or great um, goats and uh, lambs, you need people to work the farms. You needed people to work the fields. You needed, you needed, uh, you need shepherds. And that's how they all met. There were shepherdess and shepherds. So with great wrestling, his name is Naphtali. Verse 9, when Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpha, her maid, and gave it to her as Jacob. So the well ran dry with uh, Leah, so she gets her ma maidservant. Zilpa, and it means a trickling. The trickling continues, and the madness continues, but all things that work to the good for those who love God and call according to his purpose. But again, go the way the Lord wants you to go. Don't take it upon yourself. Trust in him and his timing. We try to rush through and make things happen quicker than, than, than God wants them to do. God has a perfect timing and a perfect place, and uh, it's the timing now is for his glory to explode. Watch as the rocket ship goes off. Then Leah says, a troop comes. So she called his name Gad. Gad literally means troop. And Leah's maid uh, Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Asher means happy. And that's going to be one of the um, prophecies that Moses has with Asher and the prophecies that uh, uh, Jacob, or it will be Israel, will have a prophecy about Asher that may be coming true as we speak in the Valley of Megiddo. It says, Asher will dip his toe in oil. And that is the head of Joseph, the crown of Joseph, exactly where a oil company for the nation of Israel, that's an American company, but they're drilling in Israel, on the head of Joseph and at the 
toe of Yasser, literally in the Valley of Megiddo, it's called Zion Oil and Gas. Amazing how God may be fulfilling this in the latter day. Um, uh, now Reuben went into the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, please give my son some of your mandrakes. So we know that the, the, the wheat harvest is the last harvest. This is the harvest towards uh, Pentecost. Barley harvest is the first harvest that's around, Pen uh, around um, Passover. So you know the harvest by the festival. So barley is always uh, the, the, uh, the um, Passover three festivals. Wheat is Pentecost or Shabbat. That is the wheat harvest. So we know the timing of this. And mandrakes. Uh, many probably don't teach you what mandrakes means. Mandrakes are a fascinating thing. They only come in ancient Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, they are uh, an interesting thing. You eat, the, you eat the stem of it. They're kind of like a magic mushroom, as we would say today. Um, they were uh, a flower type thing that came up. They were considered to have magic and healing powers. They had properties called uh, the love apple. They call it, they, they, the Jewish people would call it a love apple. But what's interesting, the Arabs would call that the Satan's apple, which is fascinating. But they said it had a narcotic uh, uh, element to it. So it was a, a psychedelic type of uh, substance that make you... Um, leave your intelligence, reasoning, and judgment. So obviously it put you in a state of, of, of euphoria that was good for reproducing, uh, and that's why they used it. But it's interesting that the 12 tribes of Israel here in the Bible that talks about they used the mandrakes, that the mandrakes were wanted by Rachel, and Reuben had the mandrakes. And that was so important to have these mandrakes to continue the, 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 uh, the, 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 the line of the tribes that it's called a love apple to the Jewish people, but to the Arabs, it's called the apple of Satan. Isn't that pretty uh, amazing? It's because of who, who, who came out of this, the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel would consider love of God, and the Arabs would not look at the 12 tribes of Israel as being legit, because out of the Quran, they believe that the, the blessing went to... Uh, it went to uh, Ishmael instead of Isaac, which is, goes against what the Torah t teaches us. Even though the Quran uh, says that the Torah is a holy book, they changed the Torah. They changed the original Torah to say it's Ishmael instead of Isaac. We know the truth is it's a Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob, and then his 12 tribes. And out of the 12 tribes will come the Messiah, specifically through the line of Judah and all the prophecies that the other 11 tribes will fulfill right to, right, right to the yacht and tittle, which is amazing. So the mandrakes, therefore he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. They wanted the mandrakes. They were this magic, this is a narcotic or type of uh, uh, element that they would eat that would give them euphoria. Uh, there's many things that we could call them in today's age, but we won't go down that road. You'd probably get the the, uh, the the flavor of what I'm trying to tell you. You can Google it and research it yourself, but it was more than just a little plant. It was, as we said, it had a narcotic uh, part to it. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went to meet him and said, you must come to me for surely you hired you with my son's mandrakes and he will lay with her that night. So they made a plan that these mandrakes were so important that you get to lay with him tonight so that I can get some of those mandrakes for the tomorrow night. And Elohim listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah's son uh, Leah said, Elohim has given me my wages because I've given my maid to my husband. So she called, she, so he, she called his name Issachar. Issachar. Issachar means there is recompense, exactly the way the Lord said. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, Elohim has endowed me with good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have bore with him six sons. Six is the number of man. So she called his name Zebulon. Zebulon, um, did I write Zebulon down? Uh, I didn't write down Zebulon. We'll quickly go into the, the uh, Blue Letter Bible to tell you what Zebulon means. Zebulon, it means exalted. So she felt exalted from the birth of Zebulon. Uh, afterwards, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. So we'll, Dinah will become important later on as uh, the two firstborn of Leah will go uh, absolutely bananas, is a polite way to say that. 
because of what they did to Dinah, their daughter. And uh, Dinah is, uh, w would be the only daughter. And um, I didn't write Dinah's name down either. Um, oh, yeah, I did. Uh, Dinah, or I did write down Zebulon. Zebulon means exalted. Dinah means judgment. And uh, there will be judgment coming to her uh, in later chapters. That is uh, wicked. You're going to see, we see in the book of Yasu that Simeon and, uh, uh, Simeon and Reuben had incredible strength, superhuman strength. And we'll, we'll, we'll share that when the story of Dinah comes and what they did to Dinah and the revenge that they take. That puts Jacob in serious trouble. Then Elohim, Elohim remembered Rachel. So Rachel's finally going to have her firstborn. And Elohim listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. And this is going to be not just a simple child, but this is going to be none other than Joseph. Joseph is a type of the Christ. Matter of fact, the Jewish people are still looking for Messiah ben Joseph. Uh, and Messiah ben David. And now there's a, r a leading rabbi that says he made a discovery. He said from God, uh, I guess this was about a year ago, and he said, Messiah ben David, Messiah ben Joseph, that the Jewish people have been looking for are one Messiah. And that's exactly what the Lord said to me. Probably about four years ago, I was meditating on the Lord, and I said, Lord, why are the Jewish people looking for a Messiah ben Joseph and a Messiah ben David when there's one Messiah? And he said that Messiah ben David and that Messiah ben Joseph will be fulfilled by one Messiah. Out of the line of the, the, the bloodline will be his father David. And out of the legal line will be his stepfather Joseph, literally fulfilling this. Now this rabbi hasn't said that yet because they deny, most of them deny the true Messiah has been here. But it's fascinating that the Jewish people in these end days now believe that there's one Messiah that fulfills both, not looking for two Messiahs. So, uh, God is getting closer and closer. Things are falling into place exactly in his perfect timing. That's why we got to trust his timing. And she conceived and bore a son, and, got, and Elohim has taken away my approach, uh, reproach. And so she called his name Joseph and said, Jehovah shall be add to me another son. And Joseph is going to be very uh, significant. Joseph, uh, the st story of Joseph is a type of Christ. Uh, Joseph... Um, becomes the he takes the firstborn rights he saves the his, his father and his 11 uh, brothers as we'll see later on and with pharaoh uh joseph means jehovah has added he's the only one that has jehovah in his name and again remember yeshua is jesus's name jesus is his name in greek yeshua is his name in hebrew and that means jehovah is salvation so the only salvation is through jehovah through yeshua the messiah not a lot for one word, one mouthful, but that's how precise God is. Salvation can only come through Yeshua, which literally means Jehovah is salvation. God means everything uh, in his in his names. Uh, so it came to pass, and Rachel had born Jacob or born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, "Send me away that I may go to my own place, to my own country." He said, "Enough! Now I've had it. I got a family. I got eleven. Benjamin's still yet to come." But let me go away. I've paid my due. Give me my wives and my children from whom I've served you and let me go for you know my service which I've done for you. Laban doesn't want to let him go because everything that's going on is blessing Laban because God is blessing, God is blessing, uh, God is blessing Jacob. And that's the type of thing you want to do. You want to hang around people who are blessing God or getting a blessing from God. And you can feel those people that you hang around that have a supernatural blessing from God. And that's a glorious thing. And that's what attracts the Christ. That's what attracts people to these people is because they have a blessing from God. God is showing blessings throughout the world now. And he's gravitating people to show them that the trials and tribulations of my people and the remnant are going to be blessed in these latter days. Watch them. They will be blessed. They will be blessed in great ways. And that's one thing that Laban saw in Jacob. And he want, didn't want Jacob to go because of his prosperity. Please stay if I found favor in your eyes, for I've learned by experience that Jehovah has blessed me for your sake. He even admits it. Then he says, name me your wages. I'll give it to you, whatever you want, because you're making me rich. I, want you, I don't want you to leave. So Jacob said to him, you know how I've served you and how your livestock has been with me. For what you've been before I came was little and was increased to a great amount. Before I came, you had very little, and now you have a great amount. I didn't do it, but the Most High God did. That's where we give glory to God, not ourselves. The Jehovah has blessed you since my coming, 
And now when shall I also provide for my own house? Now shouldn't I go provide for my own house? Verse 31. So he said, what shall I give you? And Jacob says, you shall not give me anything. If you'll do this for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. So Jacob could say, you could uh, you give me all your money. He didn't. He, he said, I don't need anything from you. God is going to bless me. Let's, let's show you how he's going to bless me. He's going to tell me what, because later on we, we, we see that an angel tells him exactly what he's about to do. So it's not something he made up. God told him exactly the, the speckled and spotted separated from the, the, the pure animals was part of God's plan. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. So back in the, and still to this day, they're looking for the perfect uh, red heifer without, without blemish. So he's saying, okay, any that spotted that doesn't look like it's pure, I'll take. And the pureness of those, I'll give to you, Laban. Well, it's going to be set up in his favor by God. So, so some scientists, uh, you studied Chuck Missler's old study on this particular part of the Bible. And he had scientists that, uh, some scientists will say that based on these, uh, this criteria of what J Jacob does, does can lead to speckling and spotting of the animals. Whether it, is, whether it does or it doesn't, I don't know if there's enough scientific evidence to prove that. It doesn't matter because God is showing him favor. God is going to show everyone favor for his purpose and his glory. So obviously he's going to bless Jacob. And so Laban can see who's getting the blessing. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come when the subject of my wages comes before you. So it will be done before God. Righteousness comes from God. Everyone that is not speckled or spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it's, not, if, if it's with me. So if you see anything that is not of this, I have stolen it. So it will be obvious who God gave to who. So he removed that day the male goats that were speckled and spotted and female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it, and the brown ones among the lambs and gave them into the hands of his sons. Then he put three-day journey, three is the, the number of the three-day journey that Abraham took Isaac up, three days that Jesus was on the cross before the resurrection. Three is the completion in Judaism of God's spirit. Three is the number of the Trinity. Over and over, three is important. So he's a three-day journey between them so he can, he can leave and get away. Now Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and the elm and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them, and exposed the white which was in the rods. And the rods which he had peeled he set before the flocks in the, glutter, the, gut, the gutters and the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink so that they conceive, conceived when they came to drink. Jacob just didn't make this up. We'll see in the next chapters that an angel tells him exactly what to do. Whether they're scientific to this or not, it doesn't matter. God is the, is, is the king of science and the king of quantum physics. Whatever God wants, he's going to make it happen for his purpose and his glory. So, so the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, uh, streaked, speckled, and spotted, exactly the way God wanted it, because he was that's telling you we don't do things ourselves. We listen to what God tells us to do, because God told him to do something that you wouldn't do. And he did it, and it's, it's going to pay off. And it came to pass, whenever the stronger livestock conceived, conceived, and that's happened through breeding process. If you haven't been on a farm and the animals, you know, the strong, you breed the, 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 best, the best cows together and you'll get the best offspring. So it's, it's, it's the breeding. Uh, they got stronger and stronger. The livestock got better and better and better and better. And the stronger livestock conceived and that Jacob placed the rods before the eyes of the livestock in the gutter that they might conceive the, uh, among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. So he has had an inferior a bunch of animals. Thus the man, the man became exceedingly prosperous and a large flock. God blessed him with large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. So Jacob became very rich because God was going to use him for his purpose and his glory. He was being obedient to God. Even though he was still a supplanter, he was uh, walking, starting to walk with the Lord, and he had a purpose. And he knows that he's going to have to find God's purpose. And we're going to see he's going to literally have to wrestle with the angel of the Lord. And we'll tell you who the angel of the Lord is uh, here in the next chapter. But this closes up the book of uh, Genesis 30 of the Torah. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till our next teaching. God bless you.